In this video, we will discuss the anatomy of the vitreous body. In this regard, we will begin with an introduction that describes the characteristics of the vitreous body. Following this, we will delve into the structure of the vitreous and explore its anatomical relationships. Finally, we will conclude with some key takeaways. The vitreous body is a critical structure within the eye, characterized by its unique composition and functions. It is one of the most delicate connective tissues in the body, it plays an indispensable role as a stabilizer, pressure regulator, and shock absorber. By anchoring the retina against the choroid, the vitreous body provides critical stabilization, ensuring the clarity of vision. Additionally, it contributes to maintaining the intraocular pressure, protecting the eye's internal structures from the potential damage caused by abrupt movements or impacts by absorbing shocks. Occupying the space between the lens and the retina, the vitreous body constitutes approximately 80% of the eye's volume, or about 4 milliliters, thus defining the eye's form. It facilitates metabolic exchanges with the retina and the lens, along with other adjacent tissues, despite its avascular nature. The vitreous body's composition is predominantly water, 99%, which is pivotal for its transparency. This transparency is crucial for the unobstructed passage of light to the retina, enabling clear vision. The absence of blood vessels, or avascularity, within the vitreous body is essential, any vasculature could scatter light, disrupting vision and possibly leading to opacities. This avascularity ensures the vitreous remains clear, avoiding blockages that circulating blood cells could create. The vitreous body, or vitreous humor, is a clear, gel-like substance that occupies the space between the lens and the retina within the eye. Its structure is intricately organized into zones and supported by a network of tracts and lacunae. It is organized into three primary zones, the pre-retinal, intermediate, and retrolental zones, each with distinct locations and functions. The pre-retinal zone lies adjacent to the retina, the intermediate zone comprises the largest portion of the vitreous and maintains the gel-like consistency, while the retrolental zone supports the back of the lens. Interlaced within the vitreous are tracts formed by robust collagen fibers and membranules that provide structural support. These tracts are distributed throughout the vitreous, extending from the optic nerve head to the lens periphery. Furthermore, within the vitreous are regions known as lacunae, which are areas of lower density that increase in number and size as part of vitreous synoresis, an age-related change. Now, let's examine the various parts of the vitreous. The anterior hyaloid membrane is the foremost layer of the vitreous body, situated just behind the lens and in front of the vitreous gel. Its connection at the midpoint of the pars planar is crucial, marking the transition from the ciliary body to the vitreous base and defining the anterior limit of the vitreous. The transparency of the anterior hyaloid membrane is essential, as it allows light to pass through to the retina without visual distortion. The vitreous core, forming the central mass of the vitreous body, possesses a gel-like texture due to its high water content, supplemented by a network of collagen fibers and hyaluronic acid. This part of the vitreous is more than just a gelatinous mass, it includes structured pathways or tracts such as the retrolental tract behind the lens, the coronary tract around the eye's periphery, the medial tract, and the pre-retinal tract near the retina. These tracts not only maintain the vitreous body's shape and consistency but also play a role in the eye's biomechanics, absorbing shocks and helping to maintain its shape. The vitreous cortex, a denser layer of vitreous gel, encases the core and is more closely associated with the retina. It is firmly attached at specific points, like the vitreous base, around the optic nerve, and over the retina. However, the attachment of the vitreous cortex to the retina is generally weaker, which can result in posterior vitreous detachment in older adults. Floaters, typically benign clumps of collagen fibers or cells within the vitreous cortex, can cast shadows on the retina when light passes through the eye. These are perceived as floating spots or strings in one's visual field, a phenomenon that becomes more common with age. Together, these components ensure that the vitreous body supports the eye's structure, contributes to intraocular pressure, and facilitates clear vision by allowing light to travel uninterrupted to the retina. The anatomical relations of the vitreous body within the eye are crucial to its function and the overall ocular health. Situated centrally in the eyeball, it has important neighboring structures. Anteriorly, the vitreous body is closely associated with the ciliary body, the zonule, also known as zonular fibers, and the lens. Posteriorly, the vitreous is adjacent to the retina. 
This proximity is crucial for the transmission of light through the vitreous humor to the retina, enabling vision. In conclusion, the vitreous is a gel-like substance occupying the posterior compartment of the eye. It fills the space from behind the lens to the retina at the back of the eye and is closely adherent to the internal limiting membrane of the retina, a critical association for maintaining the eye's structural integrity. The vitreous body consists predominantly of water, supplemented by collagen, hyaluronic acid, and other proteins that give it the jelly-like consistency. This composition not only ensures the vitreous transparency, allowing light to pass unobstructed to the retina, but also contributes to maintaining intraocular pressure, which is essential for the eyeball's shape. Despite being avascular and lacking blood vessels, the vitreous maintains a close metabolic exchange with surrounding tissues, such as the retina and lens. Clinically, an important aspect of the vitreous aging process is liquefaction, or the gradual transformation of the vitreous gel into a more liquid state. This liquefaction is a significant factor in the development of various vitreoretinal diseases. One of the most common conditions associated with this process is posterior vitreous detachment, characterized by the separation of the vitreous humor from the retina.